What's your first dancing memory? My first dancing memory. Oh boy, it's um, it's me dancing in my mother's living room at 14 years of age with my twin sisters. We were all dancers. We all grew up in the entertainment business as dancers first. Um, uh, we would watch Michael Jackson on MTV back when MTV actually showed music videos. And uh, we would record the music video and we would learn the dance steps. And the interesting thing about that is be because of the fact that the TV is facing us, we're actually learning the dance steps in reverse. And um, we would learn the dance steps, perform them for my mother, perform them for, for friends and family. And then later on down the line, I actually got a chance to work with Michael Jackson and perform Thriller. Even though I knew all the dance steps, I knew them backwards, so I had to relearn the whole thing on the correct side of my body for all the dance steps, so that was fun. How old were you when you decided you wanted to be a professional dancer? Wow, I knew I wanted to be a professional dancer very early on, so probably around the same time period, 13, 14 years of age, I knew I wanted to dance professionally. I knew I wanted to dance for Michael Jackson. That was like my only goal in life. And so I did everything I could to watch all of his videos, to mimic his steps, um, and you know, good thing, again, I have my sisters with me so we can rub off of each other and everything. And it's funny because everything kind of comes full circle. Now that I'm a, a writer and director, one of the pilots that I'm currently shopping around or will be shopping around very soon to Hollywood is, is a story loosely based upon my life. And the opening scene is me as a 14 year old kid teaching my sisters thriller. It's really funny. It's loving. It's comical, but it's it goes full back. It, full, uh, it goes back into a full circle, regarding you know our love, my love for Michael Jackson and, and and those dance steps back then. When did you start dancing professionally? My very first job as a professional dancer was on my 18th birthday. I was going. I was still in high school, a senior in high school, uh, performing arts high school here in Los Angeles called the LA County High School for the Arts. Um, I was a dance major there, and on my 18th birthday. January 6th, uh, I got a chance to go to an audition for, uh, for a job. And at the time, they didn't tell us who it was for, but we knew it was for somebody big. Because whenever they have an audition and they know tell you who the artist is, you know it's going to be either Michael Jackson, Madonna, Janet, or Paula Abdul at that time. And I went there and, and saw all these dancers, about 500 people at least, were there. And they started putting the music on. And I'm like, oh my God, this is Michael Jackson. So... My very first job on my, on my birthday, I, I booked Remember the Time for uh, Michael Jackson. And so that made me, you know, kind of know it around school for a while. <laughs> I bet. I bet. Yeah. And the reason they don't tell people who it's for is they don't want paparazzi there and reporters, things like that? Yeah, they don't tell people because of the paparazzi reporters. And they also don't want other dancers who were not actually called to that audition to come. Because it wasn't... It, even though there was a lot of dancers there, it was not an open call. So you had to be with an agency. And at the time, I did have a dance agent who did send me to the audition. So unless you were with an agency, they didn't want you coming in. And was it like fame, your high school? At yes. All? It was like My fame. high school was very much like fame. It's like fame, West Coast. So I was a dance major. A lot of my best friends were visual artists. So it was both a performing and visual art school. So a lot of my... Um, there's a few people that, you know, like Jenna Elfman, the actress went there. The gentleman who did the portrait for Obama, uh, the Obamas, he went to my school. We have a lot of people. Um, Anthony Anderson uh, went to my school from, uh, from Blackish. Uh, a lot of people have gone through that school, and, and it was very much like fame. So we would dance in the hallways. We would act goofy. We had friends that were singers and dancers and actors. And, yeah, a lot of them are doing really wonderful things now. Was there a Debbie Allen type um, dance instructor where you, she would demand like perfection and yes. you wanted to please her? Yes, my biggest inspiration in, in that school was a Debbie Allen type of, of, uh, of instructor. Her name is Karan Brown. Um, she's not very tall, but she is like so powerful and a spitfire and demanded more of me. And when I first went to the school, I'll be honest, I got into the school because I was a boy, not because I was a very good dancer, because of the kind of dancing that they did. In that school, I didn't do. I, I they do ballet and 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 uh, and uh, abstract modern types of dancing like Bella Lewitsky and that that kind of stuff. And I was a hip hop dancer. You know, I maybe started. I wanted to learn a little bit of jazz, but that's about it. Because again, my focus was on working with Michael Jackson, and I knew I needed that. I never thought I would need ballet. And she was the one who pushed me to say, "No, you're going to need everything because if you want to be a well-rounded dancer, you want to work consistently in the business." You're going to need to learn everything. 
So it's because of her that from 10th grade, when I first got there at 10th grade, I couldn't touch the floor. If I bent over, I couldn't touch the floor. I couldn't do the splits. By the end of my 10th grade year, I could do all those things. And she was the one who literally pushed me to make that happen. And you told her, you said, I want to work for Michael Jackson. That was in a conversation you had? Yes, I told her very early on that I wanted to work with Michael. And uh, she was, you know, she wanted me to go to New York and work like with the, the Alvin Ailey company and, and, and other companies out in New York. But no, I, I knew I wanted to be a commercial dancer here in Los Angeles. And Michael was, was top of my list. Did people try to talk you out of, of that goal? You know, when you have a specific goal and people try to say, oh, you don't want to do that and whatever their reasons are. Did, did, did people try to discourage you? Yeah, I would say we got a little bit of discouragement as far as being a commercial dancer as opposed to a dancer in a, in a company or someplace in New York uh, for my teachers. But, you know, after a couple of times of going back and forth regarding, no, this is what I want to be doing and this is, you know, this is my focus, um, they kind of stopped that conversation. And at that point, they just kind of gave me the best training that I could get before I left the school. While you were at the Performing Arts High School here in Los Angeles, how many hours a day were you dedicated to pr practice, dancing, not just at school, but afterwards? Sure. While I was in high school, I did, we did three hours of dancing in school. Um, and so on the, on the school, school nights, I, would, uh, I didn't drive, I took the bus. So that was a long time, hour and a half to get there, an hour and a half to get back. So most of my time was there. Um, Later on, when I got a chance to, when I became older and I was able to drive and have, I bought my own car, um, then I would actually take dance classes off after school and then dedicate another three hours after school. And on weekends, I would take dance classes on the weekends as well, probably another two to three hours of that. Um, in the summertime, I would do uh, workshops at UCLA. Uh, actually, ironically, the Bella Lewitsky Company uh, came into town and I studied with them for a uh, summer. Uh, the Joffrey Ballet came into town, and so I learned how to, uh, I was already doing ballet at that point, and we did some um, background work for the Joffrey Ballet, um, Romeo and Juliet, at the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion. So I got really, I jumped in with, with both feet. Like I, Once I knew this is what I wanted to do, and I had the support of my teachers and my, and my family, I, I went in with both feet and learned every single style of dance that I could learn. I was uh, taking the bus. I mean, I grew up on the bus too. I, I, I took the bus everywhere as, yeah. as a teenager. And, and you get a different perspective when you're, when you're on the bus than you do when you have someone driving you to lessons. And then people can take shots at me if they want, but it's true. You do get a different perception of life and waiting in the cold at the bus stop. Yes. That's, and while other people drive by and they do the turn to watch yeah. you, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> How yeah. is that? How, what would go through your mind while you were waiting at the bus stop? Yeah, to go to school, I took two buses. Um, so be, even before that, I was always bused to schools because I lived in an area that had gangs. And so my mother, from elementary school to junior high, I always took, um, took a school bus, an orange school bus to school, to San Pedro, to Hollywood, in junior high. In high school, I actually took you know, a bus where I actually paid to get onto the public transportation at that point. It was two different buses. And there'll be days when it was windy, days when it was rainy. But, you know, I, you know, religiously you go there, you do what you have to do. Um, you know, there, there were days where I wish, oh, man, I wish my mom could take me, but my mom had to work. You know, so I'm sitting and standing in, in the rain with an umbrella. You get onto the bus, you see a lot of different types of people. They're on the bus. Um, some people were homeless. Some people were on drugs. Some people had been drinking too much. Um, there were also gangsters on there as well. And so you learn to kind of just observe people you keep to yourself. Um, you just, you know, hope for the best, get to your next, you know, your, your next stop. Um, and then you get to school and you do it all over again when you go back home.